time to hear from our Colgate players, Jordan Burns and Will Raymond. And we have Coach Langle with us, and he will make a statement after we have questions for the players. Again, please specify which player you would like to answer your question. And uh, let's try and keep things moving a little bit more quickly. If you have a question, make sure and look for our microphone holders as uh, quickly as possible. While the, while the previous question is being asked, uh, please try and track yourself down a microphone so that we can move a little bit more quickly. Do we have questions for our, uh, for our players? Yeah, for Jordan, what was it like to have the kind of game that you had on this kind of stage? Uh, it, it feels great, you know. Uh, we came into this game knowing how good we were as a team, and um, you know to be able to go out there and show people, you know, how good we really are uh, was great. Will, what was the difference in the second half when you started to make a little bit of a run, came from a deficit, got back in front? What, what, were, what was the things that were working for Colgate at that point? Um, it was pretty much just just sticking to the game plan and, and just forcing them to take tough shots and, and getting rebounds. Um, in the first half, uh, we let up way too many offensive rebounds and. Um, that kind of messed us up in the first half. And then the second half, uh, we, we were getting those rebounds that, that we were missing the first half, and, uh, and, and we were making shots. Um, we were swinging the ball. We, we, were, we were playing team basketball like we have for the past, um, I don't know, 11 games with no one. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so. I want to hear from both Will and Jordan on this. Um, this is a big place. Nationwide Arena is huge. It's not Hamilton. But the maroon, you could visibly see. You could hear everybody. Were you so aware that? You had so much, so much support in the stands, and of course, watching at home. But right, right here in Ohio. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We knew we had so much support. You know, we have the best fans in the country. Uh, that's what we think. You know, <laughs> we we pack out Cotterill Court uh, as much as we can, and uh, you know, we we love these guys. Uh, all the people that come out and watch us play, we definitely felt it tonight. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's it's great to see all those people coming out. Um, I only really uh, knew that the football team was going to be there, so to see the whole that whole section full, full was was unbelievable. Um, and yeah, I mean we're we're a small school, but uh, we have a lot of people that really care about the school, so it's just it just shows. So. And, and Jordan, I just talked to your dad uh, in the concourse. Um, everyone's kind of looking toward next year already. Um, maybe a, a, a second back-to-back -back NCAA tournament appearance like the '90s. Your thoughts on that? Um, honestly, you know, we're just going to get back to work after today. You know, we're just going to get back in the gym, work hard for next season, and, you know, we'll discuss goals and things at the end of the year. Mark Herman from News Aid for Jordan and for Will. It looked like you guys were just enjoying it so much. Can you just talk about it? Can you just explain the sheer joy factor of what that was like being out there today? Uh, yeah, of course, you know, uh, our coach uses the term, you know, playing with house money, and uh, he was saying just go out there and have fun, you know, uh, we have nothing to lose, so it was great, you know, going out there with this big crowd and uh, being able to, to stay in the game and, you know, almost winning the game, you know, it was, it was amazing. Uh, we felt like coming into this game, it was going to be, you know, a, a close one, even though most people in the country didn't, so, uh, you know, we expected this, so that's why we were really excited, uh, and uh, we were, unfortunately, we were unable to pull it off, but, you know, uh, we, we had a great showing. Yeah, um, I mean, just personally, like I, I love playing basketball, so I'm, I'm always happy when I'm, when I'm playing. And I know we all do. That's why we do. That's why I do this every day. That's why we play at this level. Um, so I mean, just like to, to be out there on the national stage, it, it's just, it, it's just so, it, it's just, this is it. Like, like this is what you dream about as a kid. This is, this is what, this is what you watch on TV. Like this is, this is the best stage to do it. And you know, we were just all having a really good time out there. So. Uh, Stephen Bailey from the Post Standard in Syracuse. Question for Jordan. It, it seemed like early in the game they were like talking to you while you're driving and moving around. What were they saying, and what was it like to see as the game went on? Maybe uh, the Tennessee players. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean that that happens with a lot of schools. You know, it's just you know talking, getting to the game, and things. You know, uh, we're competitors out there, so guys on the other side. You know, you, you want to try to get in each other's head, and uh, you know it, it was fun. You know, it was all fun and games. You know, it's during the game, just during the flow. So. Uh, just standing, you know, uh, nothing really drives me besides my team. You know, they keep me confident regardless of what anybody else says. So, so. Rob McCurdy, uh, USA Today Network, Ohio. Um, Jordan, um, what's uh, you growing up watching this thing and, and the one shiny moment and the montage and all that, and obviously you're probably going to be a part of that. Just what's it? What did you feel like you were going to have something special today? I mean, or did you wake out of, out of bed and think this is going to be it? Um, you know, I, I felt like today was going to be a special day, definitely uh, with my dad being able to see me play for uh, the first time in a while. So, um, you know, it was great having him here, uh, having all my family here. So I definitely felt like today was a special day. And, uh, 
you know, it was obviously. So. And Jordan, just elaborate on the moment you had with your dad after the game. Uh, you, you climbed over the press spot, the row area there to enjoy a moment with your dad. Just tell us what, what was that like? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I haven't seen my dad in you know, a couple months, obviously. My parents, uh, I mean, my mom and my brothers came up uh, the uh, last week for the championship game, but he wasn't able to make it because of work. So uh, just being able to, you know, see his face and uh, be able to, you know, give him a hug and tell him I love him was, it was amazing. For both players, you were without one of your best players. You had some kind of eye issue. How much, what kind of effect did that have on you guys? Um, I mean, honestly, it, it didn't have much of an effect. You know, uh, everyone on our team is good enough to step up at any given time. You know, we work for these moments for guys being out and things like that. So we were ready. You know, if he wasn't able to play, another guy was going to step up, and uh, that's what happened tonight. Will, your thoughts on that? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, just, yeah, exactly what he said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that it for our players? Congratulations. It was a tremendous show. And uh, you have so much to be proud of with your, your championship in the conference and then uh, a very good showing here today. So thanks again for being thanks, with sir. us. Coach uh, Langle, would you like to make an opening statement and then take some questions? Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, obviously a fantastic uh, NCAA uh, basketball game. I thought the venue was terrific. The hospitality has been unbelievable. Uh, I thought the fans and the energy in the building uh, was everything you dreamed it could be. Um, you know, specific to the game, you know, kind of went as planned other than obviously your heart breaks for a guy like Rapolis who, you know, just came down with a bout of pink eye. He battled it a couple weeks ago. We thought it was gone and he woke up this morning and he, it just wasn't, wasn't happening. So, um, you know, you have a, a mix of emotions. You're proud of your team and, and happy that we, uh, fought so hard to to make it a, such an exciting game, but you know you're disappointed in the result, and uh, and your heart breaks for Rapless, who, you know, without him we wouldn't have been able to get there. I think it speaks to the character and the makeup of the team that I get to coach. That's that's who they are. You know, Jordan Burns missed five games with a um, pretty significant ankle injury, and 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 the guys just kind of kept moving forward, and that's they've kept getting getting better over the course of the season. And as a coach, you want nothing more than that. Um, you know, I, I got to give Tennessee credit. They had all the pressure. You know, Jordan joked that I said we're playing with house money, but we, we dealt with that pressure going into the, you know, end of the regular season and in our conference tournament. You know, we have one chance to get here. And so as the game got tight and close, I, I thought Tennessee managed it really well. Obviously, you know, Schofield stepped up and made a couple huge corner jump shots. Uh, it ends up being the difference of the game. He turned it over a couple more times than we would have liked and gave up a couple more offensive rebounds than we would have liked. But, you know, for the most part, I think we got to show who we are and what we can do and um, you know made some good plays to get some open shots and stepped up and knocked them down. Coach, down uh, 16 in the first half and then without the services of Ivanowskis in the second half, to be able to battle back and take the lead in the second half and then battle all the way down the stretch, does anything surprise you about this team? No, Eric, you've been with us every step of the way, and I think you've seen the, the myriad of ways that this group has found a way to battle and compete. And, uh, you know, it's been different guys in different moments, and uh, they do it together, and they believe in one another. Again, I, I've never coached a team that gives each other more high fives um, than this group. Like, we could be doing any shooting drill or, you know, being down 15 or, you know, up two or whatever. They're just – they're constantly there for one another. So. You know, nothing surprises me. Obviously, I'm, I'm immensely proud of, of their effort. And, you know, I think part of, you know, Rap couldn't see great. And we stuck with him because he's, he's a huge part of what our team. But part of getting down was him being out there. He couldn't catch the ball clean. He couldn't see great. Um, you know, so in, in some ways, the, the group rallied behind him and for one another. Uh, Stephen Bailey with the Syracuse Post Standard. Um, for the first 36 minutes, they took open threes and, for the most part, didn't make them. Then Bone hit one and Schofield hit three. You know, how much of the kind of result is just them bucking that trend? Yeah, I think a lot of it. I mean, you know, I, we didn't, the game plan wasn't just let them shoot threes, but obviously they're, they dominate in the paint in the SEC and they're number one in the country for a stint this season because of their ability to do what they do. So. You know, we knew if we just kind of played them, didn't pack it in a little bit and change defenses and uh, help and show them a crowd and, you know, give up hopefully some late contested three-point shots that, you know, our, our chances weren't great. So that was part of the game plan was to, 
you know, hoped that they would miss, miss enough for it to be close enough for us to steal. And, you know, they were, I give those guys credit. I mean, Bone is, you know, he, he's a really talented guy, but he also runs his team. And I, I think that, you know, he and Turner to combine nine assists, just two turnovers ends up being a, a huge part of the game. And, you know, Schofield stepped up and made those shots and, and Bone hit a huge one too. Yeah, two questions. Was there a time during the game when you thought we really could pull this off? And secondly, with Ivan Elskis's injury or eye issue, what did you do to try to, you know, was there anything you could do about it? Just pink eye and you just have to hope that his vision clear somehow. Yeah, I mean, our medical staff, again, it, it, they, didn't, they didn't think anybody thought it was going to be an issue. He had his glasses on all, all through the morning and, and went to put his contacts in and he was just really struggling. He's struggling to get his contacts in to see. And I mean, I think they tried a very variety of different things, medications and ice and, you know, cleaning the lenses and all those things. And, you know, just in the second half, he tried to warm up at halftime and he just said he couldn't go. Um, I think the other question you asked was, was did I ever think we, we were going to get it? Get the, yeah, the whole time. I mean, as a coach, that's what you think. That's, you know, our staff worked like crazy since Sunday to try and prepare a plan that our guys could execute to, to win the game. And so when you're down double figures, you're, you're searching for things to do. And without wrap out there, you know, we had to make some changes on the fly, but it also gave us some advantages because they had with forwards and centers on our guards. And so it allowed us to drive a little bit more and create some passing lanes and some, some you know, ball screen switching opportunities that, you know, to be honest, we don't usually use. Um, you know, and our guys stepped up and played great. They played their hearts out and they, they made some shots. And again, you're just trying to continue to hang in there, hang in there, hang in there and hope that you can, you know, get enough stops and, and make enough shots down the stretch to, to steal a game like that. We'll take two more questions for Coach. Go ahead. Hey, Coach, eight, eight years now at Colgate, uh, you've taken these incremental steps, you, conference championship last year, you win the conference championship, you get here this year. Is it a, uh, can you call it a program now and, and a new culture in Hamilton and at Colgate based on what has been going on and are you ready to make that next step now in, in another year? Yeah, I mean, our, our goal every step of the way, and I've been fortunate to have a staff that's been with me um, most of that whole time, um, and we've got another assistant coach who, who played for us, so he's been with us most of the time, is we're just trying to constantly get better. And so, um, you know, that, that, that goes to every aspect of, of what we do, whether it's, you know, helping our, in, our players get better, our recruiting efforts, whatever it may be. I'm, I'm really proud of, of how, uh, Colgate and Hamilton rallied around us. They're two really small communities. I mean, you're talking a couple thousand people. And uh, for them to, to show up here in Columbus like they were able to, it means a lot to me personally. That you know, I, I do feel good uh, about the program we've built. I told the seniors in our locker room this, as, as, we were, as they were you know, exiting that they don't get to put the uniform on anymore, but they should be really proud and hopefully will be for some time of, of the program that they've helped build. And, and I hope, you know, one of my goals when I, when I got here was that Colgate basketball would become generational, that, you know, guys who wore the uniform in the 70s and 80s and 90s would want to know these guys. And, and these guys, as they move forward, would want to come back and, and uh, you know, follow the team and, and be a part of, of our program, because to me, that's what makes it special. Last question. Seems like, I don't know if bittersweet's the right word, but the moment for Jordan afterward, he fights through the end of the game, makes those two threes, and then kind of immediately goes, and his family is there. Like, what was your kind of perspective on that moment, and, and did you have a chance to kind of say anything to him? No, I didn't get to, I, I mean, obviously you've been around our, our, our team uh, for, for, for a few days here, Stephen. And, I mean, Jordan's a talented individual, and um, he's driven in a lot of ways, and one of those things, uh, that drives him is his love for his family and their love for him. And I feel really good that I get to coach not just Jordan, but a lot of guys who come from those backgrounds who, um, you know, they've, their, their families give them to us to be, you know, their Colgate basketball family for a little bit. And as important as that is to our guys on our team, um, their families are always number one. And, um, you know, I think that's the way life should be. Not everybody gets to have that opportunity. And, you know, it's special in Jordan. It's, it's a big part of who he is. But uh, the same, same goes for just about everybody else on our team. And so I, I feel very fortunate to coach guys like that uh, who, who have those relationships and care so deeply about their loved ones. Congratulations on a tremendous season and uh, good luck going forward. Thanks, Beryl.